I have a question. Yes? You bear witness that the Lord Jesus has returned as none other than Almighty God, who has expressed the truth in doing judgment work in the last days. How could this be possible? The Lord will actually come to bring us into the kingdom of heaven. How could he leave us behind to do judgment work in the very last days? I think by believing in the Lord Jesus and receiving the Holy Spirit's work, we have already been experiencing God's judgment work. Amen. There is proof in the Lord Jesus' words. If I go not away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Amen. We think that after the Lord Jesus resurrected and ascended to heaven, at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended to work on people. And this had already made people blame themselves for their sins, Amen. for righteousness and judgment. When we confess and repent before the Lord, we are actually experiencing the judgment of the Lord. Amen. We believe that although the work of the Lord Jesus was redemption work, after the Lord Jesus ascended to heaven, the work done by the Holy Spirit who descended at Pentecost should be the judgment work of God in the last days. Had it not been the judgment work, how could it be he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment? Are we wrong to accept it like this? The judgment work of Almighty God in the last days that you talk about, how does it differ from the work of the Lord Jesus? Can you please explain it clearly? Sure. Right. As believers of the Lord, we are often touched, reprimanded, and disciplined by the Holy Spirit. So in front of the Lord, we are always crying and repenting to the Lord. The many resulting good behaviors are how we have been transformed by our faith in the Lord. Is it not the result of experiencing God's judgment? Okay. Please, explain it to us. Fine. Since you recognize what the Lord Jesus did was the work of redemption and that he preached, repent you for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, then what did you base ideas upon to determine that the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost to do the work of judgment in the last days? Right. Can you tell me? You only based it on the Lord Jesus' words. If I go not away, the Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. You dare to be certain that the work done by the Holy Spirit was the judgment work in the last days. Is there any basis according to God's word? No. Did the Lord Jesus say the Holy Spirit has come? What he does is the judgment work of the last days. No. No. In fact, the Lord Jesus never said that. The Lord Jesus said explicitly, and if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Amen. The Lord Jesus made it very clear that what he did was not judgment work. The Lord Jesus will only express the truth to do the judgment work when he returns in the last days. The Lord Jesus made it very clear. Oh, I see. I see. To be sure, it is wrong for some people to refer to the work of the Holy Spirit in the Age of Grace as the judgment work of God. Of course, when we confess our sins and repent before the Lord, we must have the moving and work of the Holy Spirit to receive the grace of God, to have peace and joy. Yes. Yes. But when someone repents to the Lord and breaks down in tears, it only means that he is moved by the Holy Spirit. That is truly what it means. The achieved effect is to make man confess and repent and qualify to enjoy the grace of God. It is not the effects achieved by the judgment of God in the last days to be cleansed and made perfect. 
The work of the Holy Spirit in the age of grace is different than in the last days. You see, this is directly related to the effect and purpose God intends to achieve in every stage of His work. So now, let us hear two passages of Almighty God's Word, and then we will understand what judgment is. Yes. Here it is. When it comes to the word judgment, you will think of the words that Jehovah spoke to all the places and the words of rebuke that Jesus spoke to the Pharisees. For all their severity, these words are not God's judgment of man, only words spoken by God within different environments, that is, different settings. These words are unlike the words spoken by Christ as he judges man in the last days. In the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, expose the essence of man, and dissect his words and deeds. These words comprise various truths, such as man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out the normal humanity, as well as the wisdom and the disposition of God, and so on. These words are all directed at the essence of man and his corrupt disposition. In particular, those words that expose how man spurns God are spoken in regard to how man is an embodiment of Satan and an enemy force against God. In undertaking his work of judgment, God does not simply make clear the nature of man with just a few words. He exposes, deals with, and prunes it over the long term. These methods of exposure, dealing, and pruning cannot be substituted with ordinary words but with the truth that man does not possess at all. Only methods of this kind are deemed judgment. Only through judgment of this kind can man be subdued and thoroughly convinced into submission to God, and moreover, gain true knowledge of God. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of God and the truth about his own rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God, of the purpose of God's work, and of the mysteries that are incomprehensible to him. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance and the roots of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment, for the substance of this work is actually the work of opening up the truth, the way, and the life of God to all those who have faith in Him. This work is the work of judgment done by God. The work of judgment is God's own work so it should naturally be done by God himself. It cannot be done by man in his stead, because judgment is the conquering of the human race through the truth. It is unquestionable that God still appears as the incarnate image to do this work among men. That is to say, in the last days, Christ shall use the truth to teach men around the earth and make all truths known to them. This is God's work of judgment. These words really have authority. After hearing the words of Almighty God, tell me how you feel. The judgment work of God is a mystery. Without God's revelation, no one can see through it. Isn't it true? Yes. yes. Almighty God has clearly expounded what judgment is and the effects of judgment work. We heard it here, ourselves, just now. After listening to the word of Almighty God, 
Do you have some understanding of God's judgment work in the last days? Yes. 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 The judgment work of God in the last days is to thoroughly cleanse and save mankind. It is not simply to say a few reprimanding or imprecating words to man, nor can the expression of a few passages of words release people from the bondage of sin to receive the salvation of God. God needs to express enough words to explain all aspects of the truth that the corrupt mankind should understand and enter in order to receive cleansing and salvation and disclose all the mysteries of His management plan to mankind. This is hundreds of times, even thousands of times, more than the words expressed by the Lord Jesus when He did His work in the Age of Grace. Ah. <laughs> the judgment work of God in the last days is focused on expressing the truth and the word of judgment. To judge and expose man's satanic nature that resists and betrays God, and the truth of man's corruption by Satan completely revealing the holy, righteous, and unoffendable disposition of God. All aspects of the truth about God's intention and requirements of mankind, what kind of people will receive salvation or punishment, and so on, are disclosed to us. By experiencing God's judgment work in the last days, we understand the purpose of God's management plan we can distinguish between positive and negative things and clearly see the demonic face of Satan who insanely resists God. We see through the fact of man's profound corruption by Satan and recognize our satanic nature that resists and betrays God. Pertaining to God's righteous disposition, omnipotence, wisdom, and all about God's possessions and being, we receive some true understanding and beget a God-fearing heart. We fall to the ground in shame, feeling that we are unworthy of living before God. This is the truth, brothers and sisters. We despise and forsake ourselves. We gradually detach from the binding of sin living out the likeness of a real man and becoming truly fearful of and obedient to God. Ah. These are the effects of experiencing the judgment work of God in the last days. Only this kind of work is the judgment work of God in the last days. Do you all understand it? Yes. 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 It's true. That's true. Let us then look at the age of grace. The Lord Jesus only did the work of redemption and preached the way of repentance, showing only the merciful and loving sides of God's disposition to man. Yes, that's true. Although the Lord Jesus also said some words to judge man, condemn, and curse the Pharisees, these were not the focus of His work. The Lord Jesus only did the redemption work, which was centered upon forgiveness of sins, teaching of repentance and bestowal of grace. It was not the work that centered upon judging and cleansing the sins of man. Ah, I see. So, true. so the work of the Lord Jesus only revolved around the work of redemption, and He expressed limited words that taught man how to repent and confess sins, how to be humble and patient, how to get baptized, bear the cross, suffer, etc. By believing in the Lord, we only need to go by the Lord's word to confess and repent, then our sins would be forgiven. We would no longer be convicted by law and sentenced mm. to death. Mm. We would be qualified to pray to God and enjoy God's grace and blessings. Amen. Amen. These were the effects achieved by the redemption work of God in the age of grace which were completely different from those of the judgment work in the last days. True. We understand it now. Yes, that's true. However, some people believe that by experiencing the work of the Holy Spirit in the Age of Grace and receiving the enlightenment, reprimand, and discipline of the Holy Spirit, 
by being able to pray in tears, confess sins, and behave well. It is actually the experience of God's judgment and cleansing. So then, my brothers and sisters, I ask you then, do we know the root of our own sins? Do we know the essence of our own satanic nature that resists God? Do we know the truth about man's profound corruption? Do we clearly see the evil essence of Satan? No. Do we know the righteous, majestic, and unoffendable disposition of God? Are we truly detached from the binding and control of sins? No. Right. Has our satanic disposition been cleansed? No. Have we become reverent and obedient to God? No. Right. If we haven't accomplished these, how could we be said to have experienced God's judgment and His cleansing? I agree. These words are quite right. Yes. Tell me, do you understand everything I've said? Yes. Understood. Yes. Understood. Yes. Understood. We understand. The work of the Lord Jesus in the Age of Grace was not the judgment work. The work of Almighty God in the Age of Kingdom is the judgment work of God in the last days. Amen. It really is so. We used to believe that as a believer of the Lord, by experiencing the discipline and reprimand of the Holy Spirit, and by being able to admit guilt and repent before God, that was experiencing God's judgment. You know, we really didn't know God's work. Mm. Mm. Had it not been for Almighty God's judgment work in the last days that unveiled the mystery of the truth on this aspect, we never would have understood what judgment work is. We would be living in our own notions and imagination and not aware of it. Yes. It is too ignorant and pathetic. That's true. It is too ignorant. By the mercy and grace of God today, we have read the word of Almighty God that corrected our erroneous views in the past, and we have seen the way to receive salvation. Yes. yes. Bless Almighty God. Yes. Thank God for enlightening and leading us to such a reception. Brothers and sisters, let's take a break. We'll continue in a moment, okay? Okay. okay. Pastor Song, how's the meeting? Thank the Lord for so important a meeting today. I'm not convinced. We have believed in the Lord for these years, crying tears, confessing sins, and repenting in front of the Lord. Oh. We have been humble, patient, loving to others, and well-behaving. How could they say we have not changed? The effects achieved by judgment work were communicated so clearly, you still don't understand it? If our tears brought about changes in our disposition, why didn't we recognize the Lord when He came? Why did we still deny Almighty God? It's true. Yes, true. This shows that we do not know God and there have not been changes in our disposition. We can't betray the truth. Yes, we still involuntarily sin often, lie and engage in deception. How could this be breaking from the bondage of sin? They've so transparently communicated what judgment work is. We have to accept the truth. We can no longer hold on to our own notions. Yes, Senior Deaconess, I advise you to think it over.